Hey, what is going on everyone? In this video, what I want to do is show you guys how you can customize your buttons in Android Studio so you no longer have to use that default gray background anymore. This is a really easy process and it's going to make a lot of your apps look much more professional. So let's get started. So before I started recording this video, all I did was create four buttons and give them a name. I defined that name within our strings resource file. So if you come over to the leftmost panel, go over to values, strings.xml, Within here, I just defined four button names, button one through four, and applied them to each of these buttons here. So the first thing that I'd like to do is just change the background of this first button right here. So if you click on it, come over to the rightmost panel, it's called the attributes panel. I'm sure you guys already know about this, but if you scroll all the way down, you'll have these common attributes. And within here, if we come down just a little bit, we have this background tint option. So if you click this, this little color gradient's gonna pop up, and all you have to do is just click in here, and if you take a look at our XML, the button color or the background is actually starting to change to whatever color we apply over here. They have colors pre-picked out over here and you can just pick one of these and that color will be applied to your background. Really easy, I'm sure you guys already know about this. And also, if you come down, you can also change the text size, the text color, the text style, and even the alignment within the button. So that is the most basic thing you can do to change the style of your buttons. But what if you wanted to change the shape of it? So like if you wanted a circle or if you wanted like an oval, you don't want this rectangle anymore. To do that, we're going to have to come over to the leftmost panel and create a new drawable resource. So in the leftmost panel, if we come down to our resources folder, drawable, if we expand this, if we right click on the drawable folder, click new drawable resource file, and then this new window is going to pop up. Now, when you're naming these things, you can't include any capitals or spaces. I'm just going to call it button two to keep things simple, then come down and click OK. So once you click OK, it's going to take us over to our button two.xml file. And as I'm sure you've noticed, there's nothing there. That's because we haven't defined a new shape for our button yet. So if we go over to the far right and then click this middle button here, it's going to show us the XML that's associated with our new button design. So within these selector tags, what we're gonna to wanna to do is add in a new item. So we can use the item tag to do that. And then we want this item to be a new shape. So we're gonna type in shape and then go Android shape and we're gonna make it a rectangle. Close that off. And then within this shape tag, what we're gonna to wanna to do is add a background to our shape. So to do that, we're gonna use the solid tag and then go Android color and then we're gonna define a color for it. Now there is this cool website that I like doing to pick my colors. It's called Material Design. So if I bring this over, it has a bunch of colors that you can choose from that go well together. So I can link this down in the description below, but I'm gonna go with this weird orange color right here. I think we'll go with 600. So I'll copy that, bring it out of the way, and then we'll just paste that color into here. And if we come over to the far right, you'll see that we have this orange rectangle displayed in our panel. So what I'd like to do for our first button is making it into a circle. So the way we can do that is by using the corners tag. So if we come down, hit corners, and then we'll go Android, and then we define a radius. So to make a circle, you have to bump up the radius a ridiculous amount, otherwise you'll get an oval. So I always use like 999 DP. And if we come over to the right, you'll see that we still get this oval looking shape, but that'll all change when we define our width and height of our button. If we make those equal, it'll end up being a circle. So we can leave this. Don't forget to close off your tag. So if we come back over to the activity main.xml file, we'll click on button two, and then come over to the far right and then show the code for XML file. Find the button two, and then within here, we have to place that drawable that we just created as a background for our button. The way we do that is by typing in Android, colon, and then we're gonna just type in background, hit enter, and then here, what we're gonna do is type in at drawable to reference our drawable resource folder at drawable, and then we're gonna scroll down to button two. And then if we come over to the display, you'll see that we still have that oval shape and that's only because our width and height don't match each other. Right now they're wrapped content and those aren't equal. So if we set them to something like 75 DP each, you'll see that we do get this circle. But you'll also notice that we get some weird fuzzy background so I'm actually not sure why that happens. I know when you run this, that's not there, but it does bother me that it is there when we're looking at the preview. So I always type in style. And then if you type in at style forward slash widget, and then it should be app compact button borderless. So this first option for us here, it should get rid of it if we applied it to the right button. Hold on, copy and paste that. 
scroll down to button two, paste it here, and you'll see that we get that weird gray fuzzy background it just disappears. So that's how you make a button in the shape of a circle. For button three, let's make a weird looking shape. So if we go back over to the far left panel in our resources folder, drawable, if we right click that again, new drawable resource file, we can name this button three, hit okay. And again, we're presented with the button three.xml file. If we come over to the far right, click this middle button to show the XML code associated with this file. We can type in our item tag again. Then we have to create a new shape. And don't forget we have to define our shape by typing in Android shape and we're gonna make it another rectangle. And then we're gonna fill this shape with a solid color. So Android color. And then if we pull up a material design again, we could pick another color. Let's go with this weird looking green. So if we copy that, pull it out of the way again, I can paste that in here. And then we can see we have this weird green rectangle over in our right panel now. So if you remember, when we created our circles button, we used the corners tag. Now, when we used the corners tag originally, we applied that radius value to all of the corners on our rectangle. One cool thing you can do in Android Studio is only apply that radius to one corner. And you can get some pretty cool effects with it. So if you see, originally we used this Android radius, which applied that number to every single corner. But we can apply this to, let's say, the top right radius. If we define it as something really large, like 500 dp, if we take a preview, it takes out a giant portion of this rectangle. So if we hit enter again within the same corners tag. If we do the bottom right or the bottom left radius, we can also give it a value of 500 DP. And now we get this teardrop looking rectangle. And then what I'd like to do is round off these corners a little bit more here. So if we do Android bottom right radius, we can give it a value of like 50 DP. And then we'll do the same thing for the top left radius, we'll give it a value of 50 DP as well. And then we'll close off our corners tag. And now in our preview, you can see we have this weird shape that you'd probably never really use in an app, but you can make it. So another thing that I'd like to show you guys is how to create a border around your button. The way we could do that is by using the stroke tag. So if we type in stroke, hit enter. So if we type in Android, you can define the color, the width, and we'll go over these dash gap and dash width later on in this video. So the first thing I want to do is define the width of it and let's just give it a value of 3 DP. And if we come over to the preview, you can't really tell that this stroke has been applied to it. You'll see that more when we come to the preview of our XML once we apply this to button three. So this is probably it for button three. If we come back over to our activity main.xml, we can come down to button three and then we can paste on or apply that background that we just created in our drawable resource file by typing in Android colon background and then we're just going to reference our drawable resource file come down to button three and hit enter so if we come over to the preview you can see we probably made the border a little bit too thick so let's go back over to our xml file and make it a value of let's try two i'll bet you that'll be fine so if we come back over okay it looks a little bit better so that's probably good enough for button three for button four what i'd like to do is apply a gradient to it so again, if we come over to the far left panel, resources folder, drawable, right click on that guy, new drawable resource file, and then I'm just gonna type in button four, hit okay. And again, it's gonna bring us this blank window because we haven't defined a shape for button four yet. Come over to the far right, click this middle button, and we'll see the XML associated to our button four.xml file. So then within our selector tags, it's just the usual, we're gonna define a new item, and then define a new shape, and we're gonna make that shape a rectangle. Close that off, and then here's where things are gonna start changing. Instead of defining a solid color, we wanna use the gradient. So we can type in gradient to use the gradient tag, type in Android, and then it gives us a list of options that we can use. So we can pick the start color and the end color. We can have it start from the center, and there's a whole bunch of things you can do, but for this video, I just wanna go over the start and end color. So for our start color, I'm just gonna go with the primary color associated to our project, and then within the same gradient tag, we're gonna type in Android again, and then define the end color of our gradient. And I'm just gonna use our accent color for the project. Close that off, and if we come over to the panel, we get this nice purple blue gradient. Then to make this a little bit more interesting, what I'd like to do is use our corners tag, and instead of making it into a circle or that weird shape that we created, we can just make it that oval looking shape by using the radius tag, so it applies to all of our corners, and then giving it a value of like 50, so if we close off that tag, 
come back over to our activity main.xml, we can apply that drawable that we just created to button four. So again, we find our button four, type in Android colon background, and then we just have to reference the drawable that we just created. And we're looking for drawable forward slash button four. Hit enter, and that will be applied to our button four, and you can see that in the preview. All right, so there's one last thing that I'd like to show you guys how to do, and that's to add a dash border around your buttons. Really simple, and I think it'll be best applied to button two. So if we come back over to button2.xml, we can actually apply our dash border to this button. So within the shape tag, we can use the stroke tag and define a stroke width. So this is gonna be the, the thickness of the border. And I, if you remember from earlier in this video, we defined a value of 2dp that just kind of worked out best. And then here's how we make it into a dashed stroke. So if we use Android, we can define a dashed width and a dashed gap. Remember we mentioned those earlier in this video? So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is define the dash width. So that is how long each dash is gonna be. So I think 5dp will look pretty good. And then if we do Android dash gap, so that's the gap between each dash that Android Studio creates. And let's make that a value of 5dp as well and see what that looks like. So we finished that off. You can kind of see this in the preview here, but not too well. So if we come back over to the activity main.xml file. You can see that there is a dash border around button two. And you can have a lot of fun with this by changing the values. So if we go dash width, if we make this a value of one DP and this one also a value of one DP, it kind of looks a little funky. Come back, you get this weird effect on button two. So we definitely went over a ton of information in this video. I would highly recommend that you go off on your own, create a new Android Studio project and start messing around with all these settings to see what types of buttons you can make. I'm sure if you put in a fair amount of time, you can create buttons that look far better than the ones we created in this video. As always, if you guys have any questions or you're having trouble getting something to work, just leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to help you guys out. If you guys did find value in this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.